hi welcome back to my channel my name is michelle today i'm going to be recommending you a book off of every single based off of every single song off of midnight's this is something i've done a couple times before i've done a couple of these recommendations for taylor swift's other albums and i haven't done midnight yet and i wanted to do it before tortured poets comes out which we are only like a few weeks away from the tortured poets department i'm very excited about it i hope it gives folklore evermore vibes because those are my two favorite albums that's neither here nor there we're here to talk about midnight's today and the truth is i've already filmed this filmed this video once i filmed this video like a week ago and uh i filmed for over an hour and i said that's too long like i know that i like to talk if you've been following me along my throne of glass videos are all over an hour long succinctity is not necessarily my personal strength but i feel like i need to be giving you these book recommendations a little bit more quickly so you can like get your recommendation and go so I challenged myself today. I have two recommendations for every single song and I'm gonna give myself one minute per song to give you those recommendations. I, to be honest, tried to do it in 30 seconds when I was like practicing for this video and I couldn't do it. The video is still gonna be long because honestly Midnight's has a lot of songs off of it. We're doing all of them, like even the bonus Jonas songs. <sighs> okay, are we ready for the first song? It's Lavender Haze. These book recommendations are all gonna have like this idea of like a love bubble of this, um, this love that they want to insulate from the outside my first recommendation is part of your world by abby jimenez to me this is like the definition of love bubble because it's about these two people this big city doctor she's a surgeon i believe this doctor she has this like family legacy at this hospital and then she ends up like crashing her car into the small town and the town's mayor helps her and they quickly fall in love but they can't be together because she needs to live in the big city and have her big city doctor life and he needs to stay in this small town and be the mayor and like take care of his baby goat and his be like his bed and breakfast and everyone around them is like this is never gonna work um but like obviously they're deeply in love and they need to figure it out and it's very much they like want to insulate themselves in their little love bubble and then my second recommendation is ghost by dolly alderson very different vibe feels a little bit more literary it kind of feels like a memoir honestly even though it is fiction it's about this woman who is 32 and it documents her like whole 32 year old year of life as she's like dating and watching all of these relationships around her change and I feel like it does a great job of talking about like the pressures that are put upon dating particularly when you're in your 30s and like how much noise there is around that next up we have maroon which to me screams second chance romance there is this a level of like nostalgia incorporated in to maroon for like the beginnings of a love and I think there is also like a lot of conversations around things being like cheap or at least cheap 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 to Taylor Swift. So let's give you the recommendations. Go. <laughs> my first recommendation is my favorite recommendation for this. And that song I feel like perfectly matches with this book. And that is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. This is the story of two writers. We've got a romance writer and a literary fiction writer. They had this like love affair when they were teens where um, something happened. They were together for seven days, like inseparable. And then something happened. They haven't spoken since, except they've been writing each other into each other's books. And now they're meeting up again as adults. They've like lived lives and they're trying to see if they could still make it work together. You know what, actually we can't pause because we have to just keep going, pushing ahead. It's so brilliant and gorgeous. The writing is stunning. I love it. My second recommendation is a similar vibe. Teens that were in love, something happened. Now they're coming back together as adults, this time in these lake houses up in Canada. It's got lighter vibes, I would say, than Seven Days in June, but it is still like, if you love a second chance romance, you have to do, I don't think I told you the title, Every Summer After by Carly fortune would be that second second book similar vibes but i think like a lighter a lighter tone than seven days in june although they're both like gorgeous Whew. okay next up we have anti-hero anti-hero to me is really about taylor swift viewing herself as like the unlikable female protagonist which is like one of my favorite things to read about in books so these are both books that i feel like have really strong unlikable but like fantastic female protagonists okay my first recommendation is Luster by Raven Leilani. This is definitely more literary. The writing is absolutely gorgeous, stunning, amazing. Just like breathtaking quotes on every page. We just have to keep going. So ignore my dogs barking. They're literally the worst. We could throw them in the garbage. Just kidding. I love them. But what was I saying? Oh, she cannot make a good choice to save her life. She's dating this married man and then her housing situation falls apart. And so she has to move in with him and his wife and his teenage daughter. And there's a lot of conversations around like race and class and stuff and it's gorgeous and amazing and she can't make a good choice like I said to save her life my other recommendation is Taylor Jenkins Reid who will appear on every single Taylor Swift recommendation list because those two in my head are like super aligned and that is her latest release which is Carrie Soto is back which is about this tennis player who has retired but then she decides to get back in the game when someone is about to break her record and she's like notoriously disliked by the media 
but I feel like the most beautiful part of the story is actually her relationship with her father and like the father-daughter dynamics that are explored. It is gorgeous. If you love Taylor Jenkins Reid, you'll like this one. Next up, we have Snow on the Beach, which is so gorgeous. I personally prefer the version with more Lana, but like both gorgeous. And I feel like these, this song does such a gorgeous job exploring kind of like the unexpected magical nature of kind of like falling in love when you weren't anticipating it. And so I tried to like capture that with both of my book recommendations. So my first recommendation is actually one of my more recent reads, and that is The Bodyguard by Catherine at Center. This book reads like a Hallmark movie. It's about the female bodyguard who has to, uh, like, who is assigned to protect this celebrity. He's like a famous movie star when he comes to visit his parents on their like horse ranch. His mom is like sick or something. And she winds up falling in love with him. And it's just like, she like, definitely wasn't meaning to. She like has recently got out of, out of this relationship and he's like famous, which adds like another level of like, I don't know, like fairy tale esque quality to it. It was like so fun, such a light and like charming little read. Absolutely loved it. My other recommendation is A Million Junes by Emily Henry. This is one of her YA books, which I think a little bit fewer people and a lot fewer people know about, but this one is like honestly a beach read, but with magic and teens they're older teens i think they're like 18 19. they're from two rival families um and then over the course of the summer they start to fall in love there's like this magical way they explore memories and grief and it's just like absolutely beautiful and stunning and magical and captures like the magic of snow on the beach <sighs> we're doing well but like i do feel like this is raising my blood pressure okay next up we have you're on your own kid which i feel like is absolutely taylor swift's like bill dung's roman this is a word i, I learned fairly recently and it's like a coming of age novel <laughs> I think I learned it when I read a little life and they were like it's a Bildung's Roman and I was like gorge for sure I didn't know what that means now I do know what it means because we're always expanding our little vocabulary and so I had to pick two books that I kind of felt fell into that category and were two of my favorites and also ones that focused on kind of like female coming of age because I feel like uh you're on your own kid also like really encapsulates the feeling of like being a woman and like girlhood you know okay my first recommendation is The Female Persuasion by Meg Wolitzer. This book is hard to explain, but it is like this narrative that follows like a lot of different people, but it starts with this night where this young woman goes to this feminist like talk at her college and it follows her and then like the people around her. So like her roommate, her boyfriend, the feminist speaker over the course of decades as they kind of are all going through their lives and learning about themselves and like growing into the people they will become. I know it's vague, but it's very, very good. I loved it so much. And my second recommendation is an essay collection. I read it really recently and it's Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. This is an essay collection that largely centers around the idea of like being a woman, being someone who exists in the age of the internet and kind of the intersection between those ideas. I thought it was really stunning and gorgeous and interesting. I listened to it as an audiobook. Would highly recommend that experience. It felt like just like a really great podcast. I finished that one early. So we don't even have to listen to the timer. Next up, we have Midnight Rain, which is like the definition of grumpy sunshine, right? Like, I think technically a lot of times they call it like reverse grumpy, sun grumpy sunshine because in this situation, she is the midnight rain and he's the sunshine. But regardless, we've got to get you some good grumpy sunshine books, especially ones. And I really wanted to do ones where like the girly is the, like the grump in the situation. My first recommendation is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I love me and Emily Henry. Our, there's going to be a lot of appearances. Drink every time you see an Emily Henry book on this list. This one follows Nora and Charlie. Nora is a book agent. Charlie is an editor and they like knew each other vaguely from New York, but they're both in a small town in South Carolina for this for like six weeks in the summer and it's about their romance and it is so much about Nora is like this very like rigid career focused driven oldest sister woman and um her interactions with charlie um are really interesting because emily henry's goal is not to like soften her which i think is a lot of times what happens when we get characters like that and i feel like she does a great job i talked about that for way too long my second book is rodham by curtis sittenfeld this is hillary clinton fan fiction like what if she hadn't married bill clinton and it's about just the ways in which female aspirations are altered and shaped um especially their desires for power by marriages and by relationships to men also kind of weird because it is Holly Clinton fan fiction. <laughs> Next up we have Question. Question is one of my favorite songs off of Midnight's. I love it so much. I wanted books that really hinged on this idea of like a complicated messy situation ship relationship type thing where things are very much on again off again like they're interacting with each other post some choices and so I picked two books where the characters are messy. All right we're ready to talk about them. 
my first recommendation is magnolia parks magnolia parks is such a midnight's coded book to me like if i were gonna pick one book for all of midnight's it would be magnolia parks and i think question though really highlights the on again off again relationship of our central relationship we're following in the magnolia books which is between magnolia and bj they are these two people who have been in love since they were teens they like dated throughout high school and then something happened when they were like 19 20 they've called things off but they're still like deeply in love with each other and they're like everything they do is about the other person to be honest but it is this like really sprawling dramatic tale of a lot of people in high society london it kind of reminds me honestly of anna karenina but in high society london my other recommendation is as just as messy as relationship and that is between connell and marianne in normal people which is about this relationship that starts when these two are in high school and then is like on and off again as they go through like college and it is um a lot more focused on like class dynamics than magnolia parks magnolia parks ignores class dynamics so if you want conversation around class normal people no class magnolia parks we just like talked over the buzzer on that one next we have vigilante shit <laughs> this requires a revenge book this requires a revenge book i don't know how else to put it so these are two of my favorite girly pop skin revenge books the first one is the mind fuck series honestly i read the whole series like a book they're like 100 pages long and there are only like five of them so like it's just kind of like one long book if you read them all back to back to back which i did in a single weekend about this serial killer named alana she's killing all these men she has good reason for it we will come to learn throughout the series and she winds up dating the fbi agent who is trying to track her down so that's like a fun little twist um this book gets a little heavier than i expected expected so look up content warning but like overall is like a pretty fun ride my other recommendation is they never learn by lane fargo another female serial killer um except this woman is working on a college campus and once again we don't know exactly what she's getting revenge against but we know she's getting revenge against something we're following her in that timeline and we're also getting a perspective of like a student at the college um in her time at the college as well so a great time again another one i finished early I mean, what more do we want to say about revenge books, to be honest? Next up, we have Bejeweled, another fave off of the album because it has a good, like, you have to shimmer. I think that's really important. I was very grateful to be able to do that at, with my, my fellow girlies at the concert. But um, Bejeweled is about, is almost like another revenge song. It is about learning to sparkle again. I'm not really learning to sparkle. It's about sparkling again after leaving a relationship that kind of, like, dampens your sparkle and so these books are also a little bit of revenge books but more like your happiness is your best revenge <clears throat> my first recommendation is tis the season for revenge by morgan elizabeth this book is like light and silly and fluffy and like a delightful time i read it when i had covid <laughs> back in, over like christmas last not like this re most recent christmas but the one before and it was just like the perfect thing for my brain that was a little bit like you know adult to read it's about this woman who gets like is broken up with in kind of a nasty way her boyfriend's kind of nasty so she decides to take revenge she's gonna start dating his boss and it takes place like over the christmas holiday season it's very cute very spicy great time my other recommendation is city of girls by elizabeth gilbert completely different tone <laughs> it's a historical kind of coming of age novel about this young woman who winds up moving in with her aunt who lives in 1920s new york city and runs a theater and so it's about her time like interacting with all these people who are at the theater all like the dancers and things and kind of um t exploring her 20s in the 1920s in new york and i just loved it it's one of my favorites Next up is Labyrinth, which to me has like a kind of similar vibe of Snow on the Beach, where the, it's kind of like accidentally falling in love. But in Labyrinth, it's kind of like bad news. You're like, uh oh, something is, mm, this is maybe going to cause some problems. But there's also like, I don't know, I think Snow on the Beach and Labyrinth are just like bestie girls. So we've got two book recommendations that try to capture a little bit of that like, oh no, I'm falling in love, but also like the magic of love, because I think both are present in Labyrinth. My first recommendation is Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I recently discovered Ashley Poston and I'm a huge fan. Dead Romantics is like Hallmark movie. Um, it's about this book, this writer who goes back to her town where she grew up. Her family runs the local like funeral home because her father has passed away. And she's been back to her small town since she was like a teen because she could see ghosts and that caused like a lot of drama at the time. Now she's back and she's seen a ghost and you know who the ghost is? It's her book editor. And so there's also this drama. She's trying to like help her family like deal with her father's death, but also like help this ghost who she knew in real life. It's gorgeous and so much fun and such a delight. There is some trouble because she is falling in love with the ghost a little bit, so 
that create some tricky situations. The other one is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is the story of this young woman who like a year after she gets married, her husband disappears. She thinks he dies. It's like been multiple years later. Now she's engaged to someone else and they find him. He was actually just on an island the whole time. And she has to pick between her love from the past and her love from the present. And I sobbed through the whole book. <laughs> so that's a warning for that one. It made me cry like really very, very, very hard. Next up we have Karma. Karma really grew on me. The first time I listened to it, I was not a fan. And then, um, now I am obviously. Obviously I am a fan. Loved it. Love it so much. But I think Karma, I think there's this like really fun, like playfulness with karma obviously and i also love the way that uh, taylor swift like takes karma as this like positive like karma are all the good things that are happening to her so i think most of the time we think about karma as being only a negative and she's like also sometimes karma is like things are working out well for me because i'm a good lady so i tried to capture that with these two although <laughs> maybe maybe less than i wanted okay we ready <laughs> my first one is yellow face by rf kuang which you might think is a weird recommendation if you've read or heard anything about yellow face but i feel like the main character in yellow face would think karma <laughs> was a song about her like i could i could feel her embodying that um it's about this white woman who like steals this dead chinese american author's novel they like were friends in like grad school and she's been super unsuccessful her friend has been very successful and so when she dies unexpectedly eating pancakes at her house she steals her manuscript it's about like race in the publishing industry it's a satire and it is like so cheeky and fun and i just i think it has a tone that's similar to karma my other recommendation is another emily henry it's one of my favorite emily henry's the most underrated one and that's hello girls and it is the story of the Emily Henry and Brittany Cavallaro. Don't forget Brittany. So these two young teens who are running away from home. They both have terrible home lives. They're best friends. And it's just about like their friendship. They have to go on a little bit of a crime spree as they run away from home. It's about their friendship. It's so beautiful. It made me laugh. made me cry. You should read it. <laughs> I like will never, I know the timer's done, but I will like never stop talking about Hello Girls because I feel like it is like criminally underread. Like it has like one one thousandth of the ratings that like people meet on vacation. And I think it's just such a like, beautiful exploration of like the depth and the complexity of like teenage girl friendship. Like there's nothing quite like those friends you make like in high school. And it's so good. One of my favorites. One of my favorite love songs from Taylor Swift like in general. And a lot of people will be like, this is actually about her mom. Or it's actually like a, a sad breakup song. And I'm like, no, I love this song so much. It's a gorgeous little romantic song and that is sweet nothing um i die i die when she said the first time i heard on the way home i wrote a poem and he says what a mind this happens all the time i'm gonna just take a nap on the railroad tracks like absolutely stunning gorgeous so i wanted to capture oh no i have three for this one <laughs> i wanted to capture my favorite books that i think have sweet nothing vibes and i'm gonna have to go extra fast because we only have we have three books one minute okay i'm ready First one we have is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I will never stop recommending this book. It is my favorite romance books. One of my favorite books of all time. Two authors. They're at a beach house. Um, they both have a lot of baggage and drama. Her father has just died and left her this beach house. And it is about them like trading genres. But it's not really about that at all. It's about them like learning to be soft and gentle with each other. It's gorgeous. Um, the next one is a fan fiction. But it's really good. Trust me. It's Draco Malfoy and the more defining ordeal of being in love. I know I don't have time to talk about this. But she recently got a traditional book deal. And I'm so excited because this is one of my favorite romance novels. It has every little trope I could want in this one draco is an aura that is tasked with taking care of hermione because she's up to some shenanigans she's up to so much she's so so busy and i don't know draco just like feels like the soft place for her to land very sweet nothing coded and my last one is transcendent king no nope, that's not that one oh no i'm looking at the wrong list get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert i love this book another really gorgeous romance book this is about this girl named chloe brown she has um some sort of chronic pain thing and she's decided to make a bucket list so she can go out and do a bunch of stuff and then her red her building supervisor helps her sorry i feel like i didn't explain any of those well we have some threes coming up though why did i do that to myself that was rude of me i guess i didn't know i was gonna do this next is mastermind mastermind is my initial favorite my first listen favorite i love mastermind i love the way it like spins itself on its head like the whole point is like she's a mastermind but he knew the whole time like he knew he knew and i also love the reading that it's about her relationship with her fans i don't think it really is i think it is about her relationship with joe but it is what it is okay so my mastermind recommendations 
Oh, we just start with a thriller. I feel like you have to do a thriller when you're talking about masterminds because um, who is the most masterminding masterminds? These girlies in the thrillers. My first one is None of This is True by Elisa Jewell. This is a story of these two women, their birthday twins. They meet in this bathroom at a restaurant and um, one of them tries to convince the other one to make her a podcast guest because the other one has a, a famous podcast and she's like, I'm about to turn my life around. And she's like, okay, you can be a podcast guest, but she's lying about everything pretty much. Is that a spoiler? I don't know. Sorry if it is. It's a thriller. You knew she was probably lying about some stuff, right? You'll get to it. Okay. <laughs> the other recommendation is, oh my gosh, I'm losing where I'm at. Emma by Jane Austen. Completely different. Completely different. This is a classic about this young woman named Emma who is like trying to matchmaker for everyone in her life. Um, she's trying to be a mastermind, but um, she falls in love in the meantime. It's very cute. It's very sweet. Um, I have not read all of Jane Austen's works, but Emma is my favorite protagonist. Although Pride and Prejudice is still my favorite of the ones I've read so far. And we're on to the 3 a.m. edition. First, we have The Great War. Another one I have three for. The Great War is, we're really leaning heavy into imagery and metaphor in this one, where we're kind of talking about a big fight in relationship as being this, like, great war within the relationship. Um, and so I have some recommendations. I think most of them involve wars, like, f real wars. We took this metaphor very seriously. So let's go. <laughs> First recommendation, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Reread this as a full-grown adult and was like, wow, this book is absolutely brilliant. If you haven't re reread it as a full-grown adult, I would recommend. I think it has some interesting things to say about like war and rebellion and society. Loved it. Um, next, I would recommend Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is a silly, goofy little romanticy about dragons and there's a war and fighting. So if you like that, you'll like that. And then my last recommendation, my best recommendation, my real recommendation is This Is How We Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal al Mutar. Again, one of my top favorite, like probably top 10 favorite books of all time. It is the story about this time war and we have Agents Red and Blue. They're on opposite sides of this time war, but honestly, don't get upset about the plot. Like it's a sci-fi romance, but like don't care about the romance or don't care about the sci-fi. I'm here for the romance. This is told largely in these letters back and forth between these two women across time. And it's just like the letters are truly some of the most beautiful, like romantic, stunning writing. I've read it multiple times. Gorgeous. It just gets better every time I read it. There's like absolutely breathtaking. And they're on opposite sides of a war. So like great war vibes. Next, we have Bigger Than the Whole Sky, which um, very quickly joined my ranking of Taylor Swift songs I rarely listen to because they do make me cry. That's right. Um, this song is about a loss of some type, some kind, and kind of the grief of losing something. And um, it is really stunning and beautiful. And so I had to pick some really stunning and beautiful books about grief. My first one is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Surley. I love Rebecca Surley. She does these beautiful speculative books that always make me sob. This one is about this woman who loses her mother. And then she goes on this trip to Italy that they were supposed to take together. And when she's there, she meets this younger version of her mother. And it's just like really beautiful and sweet and touching. And I cried a lot. It explores grief really lovely. Lily. Next thing is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This is a literary fiction novel about this family. One of the daughters goes missing, um, I believe, at the beginning of the novel. And it's about all of their relationships with her and all of the elements of their relationships that they projected onto her and how that like changed her as a person and then also about their grief of having her being gone. Um, absolutely beautiful. And my last recommendation is Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Kahasi. An absolutely stunning book. It is super tiny, but it packs a huge punch it's about this woman who's in neuroscience her brother died of a, an addiction when she was younger and her mother is deeply depressed still about it i feel like i didn't get to talk about that in the book enough it's like truly stunning it like we're just going over time sorry i make the rules so i can break the rules <laughs> and um she does such a beautiful job of kind of like talking about the role of like religion and addiction and blending those together and um her family is has immigrated from um, somewhere in Africa. I can't remember. I think it might be Nigeria, but I'm not hundred percent on that. And the story of like what it is to be an immigrant and it is like truly like a, I think it's like 200, maybe 300 pages. I don't even think so. And it packs so much in there so beautifully. The writing is stunning and gorgeous and amazing. Highly recommend. Next we have Paris. 
in Paris is such a bop of a little song and it is about being so in love with someone that being just like locked up in your bedroom together almost feels like you are in the magical city of Paris and it's so cute okay my first recommendation is The Seven Year Slip again by Ashley Poston this novel centers around this idea of this magical apartment where um sometimes it just slips backwards in time and it's only like within the apartment you can't control it and this girl is in her aunt's apartment her aunt has died she's living there now and she gets there one day and there's another man there because he lived there seven summers prior and they have like this little romance but it can only really exist within the walls of the apartment because the of the apartment magic and how it works so it definitely gives paris vibe because they're like locked in this apartment together it like expands from there eventually like don't worry okay also it like gives like the bear vibes because there's also cooking which is so fun and then my next recommendation is the people we meet on vacation by emily henry this one i don't think they actually go to paris but this is the story of this like friends to lovers situation in which these friends who met in college go on a vacation every summer together but two summers ago they stopped going on vacation so now they're going to palm springs as one last attempt to like mend their friendship because something happened something happened we don't know what happened but something happened their last trip they took together now they have to mend their friendship but it has like fun traveling vibes now i'm just breaking the rules left and right high infidelity i love is high infidelity currently my favorite song on midnight i think it might be i love it so much i think the beat is so good <laughs> Do you really want to know where I was April 29th? Do I really have to count the constellations in his eyes? There's many different ways to kill the one you love. The slowest way is never loving them enough. Am I getting the words wrong? That's my business. And if you correct me in the comments, I won't be happy with you. Anyway, I have two recommendations for High Infidelity, obviously. My first recommendation is Never by Jessa Hastings. This is a Peter Pan continuation. It's like Peter Pan fan fiction, honestly. It's about the great granddaughter of Wendy, and she is taken back to Neverland because if you read the original story, the daughters of Wendy are supposed to go back to Neverland. And she's taken back to Neverland, and like right before her 18th birthday, the summer before she's kind of supposed to go off to university, and she like has this little bit of a romance with Peter Pan, but she's also very into Peter Pan's nemesis Hook, captain hook's son jameson hook um this book is like absurdist fantasy it like feels kind of like a children's story in the way the fantasy world is laid out it was like magical and delightful and like i think maybe not for everyone but if it's for you you'll really 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 enjoy it my other recommendation is memorial by brian washington very different literary fiction a little bit serious it's about these two men who have been dating for a long long time and we they can both kind of sense that the end is coming soon um and then they're separated because one of them has to go to japan to hang out with his dying dad and his mother comes back to the united states is hanging out with the other boyfriend <laughs> was that clear i feel like i did not clearly explain that at all but it's good it's a good time i enjoyed it so i'm sorry that my recommendation did such a bad job of it okay next we have glitch glitch i would include in the family with uh snow on the beach and labyrinth and that is like this accidental love like oop, we accidentally fell in love there was like some little mishap happened something slipped when it shouldn't have and now we're deeply madly in love with each other and then i have two recommendations for it <laughs> my first one is another bodyguard romance okay maybe i have a thing for bodyguard romances i don't know <laughs> it's triple duty bodyguard by lily gold i have a, such a soft spot for these lily gold books lily gold writes these like um i like to call them team mark romances but i've heard they like are sometimes called like why choose reverse harem there's a lot of conversation around like what the appropriate name for them should be i don't know why i'm choosing to tell you i don't know but it's about this <laughs> celebrity she has these three men who are being her bodyguards and then she falls in love with all of them and um i cried in it it is so deeply spicy <laughs> but also emotional i don't know how lily gold managed to manages to do both but she does there we are and then my other recommendation is funny you should ask by Alyssa Sussman I just feel like the like celebrity normal people trope like works well for glitch and this one it is about this like reporter interviewer she interviews this guy the celebrity famous man <laughs> and they definitely have chemistry and then years later they're interviewing she's interviewing him again because that story went viral because they so clearly had chemistry and they're like I don't know it's like a second chance romance I guess sort of <laughs> did they have a first chance <laughs> okay I'm clearly getting worn out <laughs> these are getting worse oh no another three pete <laughs> another three for one um would have could have should have which was one of my surprise songs in nashville did get to scream sing give me back my girlhood it was mine first with you know thousands of other women and it did change and heal a part of me it also was at this point probably 1 30 in the morning because our show got delayed hours because of the rain that's neither here nor there except it is everywhere because it is a part of me 
<laughs> like I said, it changed me fundamentally. But what if could have should have, I feel like is really uh, a reflection upon a relationship that um, Taylor had when she was younger and how it really damaged her and still has like echoes on the way she lives her life currently. So I wanted to kind of capture, capture that sort of energy in my recommendations. My first recommendation is My Dark Vanessa, and I didn't write down the author because I hate myself apparently. I think it's Kate Elizabeth Russell Stewart. I'll put it up on the screen, but it is the story of this young woman who has a relationship with her teacher when she is 15, um, and she reviews it, views it as like a romantic relationship, obviously, but like uh, upon reflection, we as the reader know that it's like clearly incredibly like illegal and manipulative and terrible. Um, and it's about her timeline as that is happening and also her reflecting back on it now that she's like in her 30s. I thought it was absolutely stunningly done and did a, such a great job of allowing us to like empathize with her as a character while also not romanticizing the relationship. Stunning and gorgeous. My next recommendation is The Comeback by Ella Bierman. It's about this young woman who we don't know what happened to her. Something happened to her with this director and she like left acting for like a full year. Now she's back. She's ready to start acting again and get revenge on this actor or this director gorgeous stunning loved it so much my last recommendation is a diary of blood by st gibson i won't be able to get into it because i'm about to run out of time but it's a vampire revenge story gorgeous it's about dracula's wives then we have dear reader i feel like dear reader and you're on your own kid are sister songs it is about taylor swift like giving advice almost to us i think we're the readers like we're the audience of this and i think the line that really sticks with me from this one is like never take advice from someone who's falling apart and like the implication being that she's someone who's falling apart and she's like giving us this advice but also like she doesn't know what she's doing either and so i wanted to capture that sort of energy with these recommendations my first recommendation is the hero of this book by elizabeth mccracken this is this really beautiful like auto fiction piece about this woman who's spending a day in london shortly after her mother's death and it's like her reflections upon her mother's life and her mother's death and also like what it means to be a writer the character in this book is also a writer and the line between the author of the book and like the main character of the book grows so blurry in such a way that was so interesting and fascinating i absolutely loved it it's super short such a gorgeous piece and i feel like there was a lot of conversation around like when it should be like like what should our relationship as readers be with writers gorgeous my other recommendation is everything i know about love by dolly alderton which is a like a memoir essay collection by dolly alderton about largely her like relationships over the course of her 20s um both like her friendships and her like romantic relationships and again it's like sort of advice but also like really explores like the messiness of all of that rather than being like really prescriptive which i feel like is the the thesis of dear reader we're getting so close to the end. So close. Um, we have Hits Different. Hits Different is this song about like just being a mess after a breakup. <laughs> being like a stumbling, bumbling little mess. And like making like not great choices directly po post breakup. So, and also the idea that like this breakup is different because it was with you. My first recommendation is The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. I love a Christina Lauren romance. This one is, I think, one of her more recent ones. It is the story of this romance writer, and she decides to participate in this, like, reality television show. And um, before the show even starts, she, like, falls in love with the producer, which is a problem because she's supposed to fall in love with the contestants on the reality show. And I just feel like it has that, like, kind of, like, oops, but also, like, this is not working with them because they're not you sort of energy. I forgot to push the time around this one. I'm really failing at this. Um, I don't know. I push the timer now. Is it too late? You're gonna be like, this is seven years. You're gonna be know more than me what is happening here. I'll try to go fast. And then my next recommendation is The XX by Erin Sterling. This is like, also gives Hallmark movie vibes, <laughs> but it is following this witch who um, had this like summer fling years ago. Was it years ago? I don't know how long ago it was. Um, and she cursed him. But now he's back in town and he's trying to deal with the consequences of this curse which have like really really affected him pretty deeply um because he's like connected to the town's magic so he needs to be back in town to fix the town's magic okay hopefully that was within a minute because again i forgot to set the timer <laughs> we're gonna set the timer because this is our very last song this song is devastating also do you remember how taylor swift tried to keep it from us she was gatekeeping her own song she said you can only buy this at the concerts themselves okay rude that you're losing me this song has some of the best lines in Taylor Swift's discography. Like the the line succession, I'm the best thing at this party. I wouldn't marry me either. A pathological people pleaser who only wanted you to see her. A moment of silence. So obviously we had to capture just like the like truly stunning, gorgeous, 
rot sort of feeling of you're losing me with my two my last two book recommendations the first one of course is that emily henry as soon as i heard you're losing me i knew this was happy places song happy places the story of win and harriet they were like college sweethearts they were engaged their engagement has recently been broken off but they're pretending it hasn't because it's this one last relationship with this friend group but it is so much about like like please do something fix this we're deeply in love with each other but we just can't seem to like mend things we can't seem to make this work and it, this book despite being called happy place made me cry it is so beautiful we've got harriet who is a pathological people pleaser to the max you're losing me like anthem happy place they're united as one and then we have our wives under the sea by julia armfield this is technically horror but i also think there's such a beautiful like they kind of like grieving romance not like a romance in that it has a happy ending because it doesn't but it's the story of this woman who goes down in a submarine and she when she comes back to the surface um her wife is like grappling with the changes that have happened with her and she can just watch this she's watching her wife like wither away again didn't feel like i explained that well it's gorgeous it has this like really foreboding like sea horror like if you're scared of deep dark water maybe this book is for you or maybe it's not for you but it was really gorgeous okay we did it. That was way faster. That was only 45 minutes <laughs> instead of over an hour. I don't know. It was a lot of books. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you found some good recommendations for yourselves. Also, I'm so excited to see Tortured Poets in a few weeks. If you enjoyed this and want me to do Tortured Poets, I like probably will. So let me know. Keep me updated. All right. That is all from me, my friend. I will see you in the next one. Toodaloo.